welcome to today's video guys. So today I'm looking at the Namek Flux Trigger, which if you haven't seen is a new style of trigger for VSR-10 SSG-10 based rifles. Uh, it's coming out of the US from a guy called Namek. I got this, uh, well at the time of recording, maybe a month or so ago, and I've tried it in a load of different setups that I've got. So I'm just going to head straight into it because this isn't going to be a massively long video, as I said I've already done a blog post. But what you're going to get is you're going to get the trigger itself, which is this. And then you get two sets of screws. So you get some M4 screws. So these will be for your SSG-10. Put those to the side. And then you'll get two standard M3 screws. And they are for pretty much every other VSR receiver. What makes this trigger a bit different, and I've got a Maple Leaf 90 degree trigger here. So I'll, show, I'll, I'll go through them one by one what the main differences are. So the very, very, very first thing is this has got a safety on it. The Namek doesn't, which is fine. Most people remove it anyway because it's just a pain in the ass. This has a removable spring guide stopper. This one doesn't. This, stupid screws, has adjustable trigger pull, which is done via the rear. This has it and it's done from the underside, which I'll show you in a minute. They're both 90 degree. Main thing is this relies on springs. So you've got a spring here. And then there's another one round the back here for the trigger. And this is basically what keeps it returning. So when once it's been shot, it slides over and it springs back to lock it again. This is all done on springs. Springs can and do break on the VSR triggers. It's probably one of the weaker points. Some triggers like the Action Army and the Lalax uh, and the Bull Trigger are notorious for the springs breaking. The Maple Leaf, to be fair, has been really good. I've used this in one of my builds and I've got a spring of custom works which I've used for years and nearly all my builds. Never had a spring break but it is a problem with using springs. This however has no springs in it, not a single spring. It relies purely on magnets to return the stopper and to return the, the trigger back to its position. And they are here at the front and here at the rear. Returning back is all done by magnet and this sear, returning back, is all done by magnets. That in itself is a very nice feature because they're not going to wear out, not like springs do. And it's very crisp, very nice. There's very little mechanical movement going on. It's, this is essentially free moving other than when it's being returned back by the magnet. The other feature on this that's very different, and it's some of these features aren't new, right? I want to clarify that. This is going to be a commercially available version of this, but this whole bearing and magnet thing the bearing has been used in a few different ways, whether it's been metal bearings or PTFE, Derlin, Teflon tubing, um, removable sleeves, etc. And the magnets was uh, a trigger called M-Trigger by Nubia, I think, back in the day. But it never took off, it never got anywhere, it was sort of kept on the forums. Whereas this has been massively improved on, it's been worked on over a long period of time to get it to where it is. And the features like the magnets are great, and here there's a bearing. So as and when the cylinder face contacts either edge of this, this will move backwards and forwards. It's one of the common points of wear on a trigger, and you'll see it on this Maple Leaf one hopefully, is the cylinder rubs against the spring guide stopper and you end up with grating. A lot of that is down to how people cock the rifle. Have I got a cylinder here? I do have a cylinder here. But the bit I'm talking about is this cylinder cutout. On some cylinders, this can be very, very sharp, very, very grating, and it does tend to rub on the side of this and it just wears away and you get a bit of grinding. Ideally, if you're serious about building your rifle and getting the best out of it, you should be sanding this and deburring it, especially on rifles like the SSG-10 where the stock cylinder is poorly cut. Not a bad rifle, but just that is an area on the SSG-10 that is not great, is the cylinders, um, and they are rough. So that should be something you do regardless of the trigger, but even more so if you want to use this trigger because it makes it very smooth if you do. But what happens, uh, again, I don't know how you'll see this on there, but this shouldn't really touch this spring guide stopper if it's being cocked correctly. But let's say it does, with the bearing, it's going to ride on that bearing. This is a maple leaf cylinder that I haven't touched, so you might hear the grate. I'm not sure how well you'll hear it. But that will sit inside that channel and ride along the bearing, and it won't hit that spring guide stopper. And that happens whether you tilt the cylinder when you're cocking it left or right. Either side of this should, in theory, ride along this bearing. And that's going to massively reduce wear. If Namek's clever, which I think he is, he'll probably make this a, a, a part that you can change out for different cylinders uh, and if this ever does actually wear out. But that makes it very, very smooth to cycle. 
other one of the features, and this is clever, I, I do like this, and I'll try and show it on camera. So you've got these two screw holes here, right? I don't know whether you'll be able to see it, but they're stepped. So in that hole is a smaller hole. And the theory behind that, or the workers behind that, is quite clever. So on a normal trigger, obviously you've got your two holes here and here, they are, well, for this particular trigger, it's an M3, the ball trigger will be an M4, but these are M3 screws. But to allow this to work with different receivers and these stepped holes, the screws you get are an M4, which sits in, and it sits on the outside of the trigger body, like so. But if you're using, so let's say, just a Simon CM701 receiver, you put that screw in, it sits flush with the body, but it still goes through. It sits in a recess, so you, the screws are interchangeable. So if you end up tapping your receiver to use M4 screws, not a problem. You've got a set of M4 screws that's come with this. If you're plonking it on a standard AA, Maple Leaf, Lalac, Simer, JG receiver, etc., with the standard M3s, again, not a problem. Trigger pull, as I mentioned earlier, is done via a small screw in here. It's worth noting at this stage, this isn't the final design. This was a prototype that I was kindly sent. There are a few things that I've pointed out that I had some issues with. This trigger design, uh, on the prototype at least, is held in with one screw here, and this blade is interchangeable. What I found with mine is it very quickly loosens itself so the trigger wobbled side to side. That's been addressed on the prototype, I believe, with the dual screw design. One of the other features I like, on the sear here where it releases, there is a small bearing. So rather than just being two metal edges, it's actually, there you go, if I pull the trigger down you can see it, that is a roller bearing. So that makes pulling on this, so if I put some pressure on this sear, that makes it very smooth. Like the brake there is, I think mine's set quite light, but it just rolls off. It's really nice, really crisp. There's no grating, it isn't like an immediate drop. You can feel it, which again is quite nice and I like it. The only bits that I don't like about this, and it's not this particular, this trigger in particular to be fair, there are other triggers out there, I don't like the spring guide stopper not being removable from the bottom. I get why on this one it isn't, and it's by design, and it is really a personal preference thing, but I don't like having to take my trigger off fully when I'm doing any kind of maintenance or upgrades or tests, which as you can imagine for me, I'm forever stripping my VSRs. It's nice to be able to have some triggers like this maple leaf with the receiver that I use this with. There's a little lever here you can pull, hold the trigger, and you can slide your whole cylinder out without taking the trigger off, which is very, very nice. With the Springer Custom Works, you can take it out and pop the spring guide stopper out the bottom like most. With this one, you do have to remove the whole unit. That's the only gripe I've really come across, that and the loose trigger. Otherwise, it's good, it's fit on everything, it's worked with everything that I've put it in. Um, you might see some pictures and the B-roll of this on different receivers. As said, Maple Leaf, Action Army, I think I tested on the blog, SSG, etc. I feel like there was one other comment. So you might, depending on your setup, lose a small amount of FPS. And the reason you'll lose that FPS is because you're ever so slightly, literally just slightly, reducing the volume of your cylinder. And the reason being, this spring guide stopper design um, requires more space, it requires more material. So everything is ever so slightly shifted further. And because of that, that piston when it's cocked is sitting a smidge further forward than it would usually be, which is going to tap into that volume you've got. And again, we're talking maybe 7 to 10 FPS I think I lost on one of the rifles and one of them it made like 2 FPS difference so it's, it's going to vary by setup and I'll try and show it on camera I don't know how well it's going to I'll just use a screwdriver and point to it like a professional these are roughly lined up so let's say the spring guide stopper's there you can see this one is ever so slightly sat further forward and for that reason this sear is also sat slightly further forward so you are reducing your available air by a fraction, but you're getting a trigger that, I quote, should last a lifetime, um, which is a good trade-off. And the VSR cylinder volume is fine for most builders and most weights that people are using. So for a trigger that feels nice, that has that clean break, that has that... And it's quiet, by the way, as well. It's very quiet because this sear isn't smacking on anything. I'm not going to name names, but on some triggers, where this sear releases, so when this goes forward... There's a bit there that it hits. This has got a little bar that it touches, but it's such a small contact area and it's solid that it's not too bad. On the maple leaf, the maple leaf is very quiet to be fair because it has nothing that it's hitting on. It literally just springs forward and there's nothing. But there are other triggers out there where actually there is a, a loose fitting bar there 
Fitment wise, I've got one of my VSRs behind me. So I'll just use this one as an example because the fitment is ever so slightly different as then you have to apply a bit of pressure because of how this sits. So this is a maple leaf receiver. So I'm going to use two small M3s. Everything's obviously already installed here. He has thought, Namek has thought about this because he's put a chamfer on this edge here. But you've got to push this in and it will click into place, but the screw holes won't be lined up. And the reason is obviously because this is ever so slightly pushed forward, you've got the resistance of your spring, spring guide pushing back. So you kind of need to just push this forward ever so slightly to get your first screw in. And again, this is also partly because you're not removing the spring guide stopper. But once you've got the first screw in, so all I'm doing here is I'm putting a little bit of pressure from this side to make sure that hole lines up. And then at the rear, it should just go straight in if you've got that front one lined up. It's funny, I'm trying, I can feel the magnet pulling that Allen key. because it's, Obviously it's near the back to return that trigger. Um, so as I'm tightening it, I can actually feel the magnet there. So that's on. I don't have it loaded. This is about 2.4, 2.5 joules, I think. It's one of my test builds. I was messing around with the sensitivity and I think I might have made it a tad too light. Yeah, there we go. So that's nice and smooth. That's where the nozzle's hitting, by the way, if you're wondering what that is, you can see that in there. But that is smooth, it's quiet. I can tilt it either way and that's gonna cock absolutely fine. But the brake is very much, there you go. That's with a wasp. So very nice catches there. Smooth return back, lock it down. So I'm blocking the end of the barrel to test the seal. Trigger's obviously down here. I've got this set so it's quite a tough trigger break because I prefer that rather than light, but doesn't take much effort at all. That's very quiet from a, from a mechanical point of view, from the way that normally you hear that mech, trigger mech noise, that's quiet. And obviously the wasp is there, sealing. So it fits, it works, it does its job. This isn't the final one, there are some little tweaks to it and I think some of the things that I've addressed, which I'm gonna say because they're on the unit that I physically have here. The caveat being, I think some of the things I've mentioned about the trigger being loose, uh, coming loose, is fixed on the prototype. There's a lot of sharp edges, again being a prototype. I'm going to mention it because it is what I have in front of me. But I spoke to Namek, he sent me some updated pictures and some information and I think a lot of this is just prototype things. Like they're going to be fixed on the production ones. Piston wise, I've tested Action Army, uh, Layla, all 90 degrees basically that I had to hand with no problems. Uh, spring guide wise, again no problems. There's one maple leaf spring guide that has like a long protrusion on the end. That doesn't work. But otherwise, the wasp works with the spring guide. Um, and Action Army, Lalax, all work with no problems. The magnets work, the bearing on the trigger sear works, the bearings on the spring guide stopper work, it's comfortable, it's quiet. The fact that the trigger blades can be changed out, or, or at least the production ones will be able to, is very nice. Adjustable trigger pulls are very nice, and simple things like the being able to swap the screws out depending on what receiver you're using is, is very, very nice. I appreciate being sent it. I don't know, no, we will probably watch the video. If you do, you've done a good job. I like it, it works. I would, I mean, I'm going to use this in my build. Uh, I won't use it in this one because this with the maple leaf trigger allows me to have QD cylinders, so it won't go in this build. But I might try it in one of my other VSRs. I've got, well, I've got a wall behind me, a VSR. So this is, this is gonna go in one of my personal rifles now. Like I'm happy with it, I like it. Would I buy it over other triggers on the market? I think it's gonna really come down to price and availability and durability there's other triggers that i've used that i've yet to break and i've had some of them for years i've had this for four or five weeks maybe i've hammered it i've gone i've done it i've put a lot of rounds through this uh, through the chrono not just on this receiver but on others and i've had no issues with it but it doesn't it hasn't had the longevity testing that some of the other triggers i use have but if the price is good and it's readily available i think people are going to buy it and i i'd have no problem using this in any of my bills or recommending it it's certainly up there with some of the other triggers that people know that i use hopefully that's some some good information for you guys um if you've got any questions about it reach out to me leave a comment uh, or message me on Instagram or reach out to Namek straight away. I'll link him in the bottom of the video. But hopefully you've enjoyed it, guys. Hopefully that's an interesting look at something new that's coming out. Um, I approve. I, I absolutely am humbled and love the opportunity to, to work with other designers and see new things come to the market. And things like this are great. Like I've spoke to the guy at length. He's, he's nice, he's talented. 
um, and I think he's made a good product here. And I'm, I'm happy to see it come to the market, and it's certainly something that I'll be using in builds going forward. So well done. As always, guys, thank you very much. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video, and to you, Namek, well done. Thank you again for sending this to me. I appreciate it. It's not going to go to waste, and it will live on one of my rifles. Bye-bye.